Jamkhet is located in a semi-arid, drought-prone area of India, with flat land and poor rocky soil. Farmers try their best, growing grains and some vegetables for home use and sale in the Saturday market. Bullocks are used for plowing, rain irrigates the land, and women are used for weeding and harvesting. Although average rainfall is 14 inches, it comes mostly in the monsoon season of July to September, leaving a dry spell for about nine months. With recent climate change, failure of annual monsoon rain is not uncommon. Less than 1% of village land is irrigated, and locally available seeds are of limited quality. Because of the poor conditions, many families are forced to migrate for half of the year, often working in sugarcane factories in order to survive. This migration has disastrous effects on the health of the entire family and virtually eliminates the educational opportunities for children. Both to discourage this migration and to help villages develop, CRHP saw the improvement of agricultural techniques and practices as a necessary step towards the promotion of better health and nutrition. Partnering with government agencies, universities, and other NGOs to obtain financial and technical support, CRHP developed a model farm to be used for training purposes. With 80 acres of land growing nutritious fruit trees, drought-resistant high-yield crops such as the multi-purpose drumstick tree, and medicinal herbs, this farm is a living testament of what is possible in dry land farming. Plant nurseries and simple grafting techniques are demonstrated to maximize production. The farm is entirely organic, using vermiculture to create sustainable fertilizer, and local plants as an effective way to minimize pests. Drip systems and water harvesting are used to conserve water. Animal husbandry, involving goats, chickens, cows, and buffalo, teaches visitors best practices in caring for the health of animals and in maximizing value from their animals. Produce from the farm is used to prepare the meals for staff and trainees at CRHP, and surplus is sold at the market, with the profits being used for the CRHP hospital and training programs. Like most activities at CRHP, the farm focuses on empowering women. Over the past three years, 100 groups of women, with about 20 in each class, come to the farm regularly for an intensive three-day training. Already, a huge percent of these women are standing on their own two feet, utilizing the techniques they have learned to generate their own family income. So what we have done here is to identify certain crops and trees that do well in this dry area. We also have identified certain businesses which we can teach to the local women so that they can earn a living. We focus on women because here in these rural areas they do about 85% of the farming. So we've decided to empower the women by making them the center of our activities. We are developing this farm as a demonstration as well as a training center for these women. We are teaching them vermiculture, how to raise goats and chickens, and how to grow an organic farm. Even at this model farm, 80% of the labor and management is done by women who are participating in our rehabilitation program. The farm is also home to a rehabilitation center for victims of repeated domestic violence and patients with HIV AIDS in need of support. In exchange for their work with the basic tasks of maintaining the farm, the patients are given a home, nutritious food, and constant medical and emotional support. People were afraid to touch me. When we ate together, no one would even touch my bread or curry, or even the glass I drank from. Even my own family wouldn't allow me to come into the house. When the village health worker told me about the rehabilitation program, I was on the verge of suicide and weighing only 29 kilos. I was nearly dead from malnutrition. But when I came to the farm, people let me be a part of the life here, and I began to learn about the disease my husband gave me. I learned that it was not my fault that people shunned me, and that by taking care of myself, I could live many years yet. I felt so happy to have hope and to be part of a family again. 
and slowly I gained more and more health. Now I weigh nearly 50 kilos and I can return to my village to see my niece and nephew grow up.